All right, we'll call to order the uh, December 5th meeting of the Scandia Planning Commission. If you would all join me in saluting the flag. <laughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, and um, we've had a chance to review the agenda. Any changes? No changes. Looks like we can make progress. <laughs> okay. Motion to approve. Second. Second. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Um, all right. And uh, uh, see if you have had a chance to approve the minutes from our work session and our uh, regular meeting from last month. I, I just noticed a couple of typos. Down, so. Okay, I'll check those. Well, they're okay. the kind that a spell checker won't catch. Okay. Uh, check them on page four. They're both on page four. Um, this is just to prove that I actually read them. In <laughs> uh, like the second paragraph where it says confirmation should be conformation. Okay. And at the bottom where it says compliant, it should be complaint. I presume from the context. And that would say the bottom of page four? Yeah, and the, the, and the bottom paragraph. Okay. So nothing spectacular, just, no, oh, thank you. Do we take these separately? No, I think it was one. And will we approve the minutes as amended for November 14 work session and regular meeting? Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Uh, all right, that brings us to our discussion, which we're starting out with um, Shoreland. Yeah. Shoreland. Now, uh, I, w I actually probably should have brought this up when we were talking about the agenda, but should we switch the order of these at all? Do you think? Um, in hopes of getting the shoreland done, but you think there's no chance we're going to get this done tonight? I think we might. Kind of depends on how much you want to talk about some things. Okay. We and this is considered the public hearing, right? No. 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 no, no we're no, not doing a public hearing on this yet. For that's no, one of, one no. of our shoreland. issues. No. None of them are public hearings. One of our issues will be how we want to deal with the shoreland in terms of getting it out to the public. Okay. I think once we do get it cleaned up and whether you want to have some time to have it go to the lake associations, you know, before a public hearing so the people most concerned about it have a chance to think about it a little bit. Okay. Just sure. you know, we're getting we're getting close on it, so that okay. would be something to think about. Well what 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 if and I I know we should have done this already, what if we uh, move A to the end, A to the last, make that the first, the last discussion item, go through the other two, sure. try and get through those, and then we can kind of, that way we have the rest of the, you know, the rest of our mm -hmm. evening to work on the shoreland. Thank you. Thinking the BNC will oh, be sure. Want to do uh, I'm, that's what I'm assuming, hoping. They look like they'll be fairly yeah. straightforward. <laughs> okay. Okay, should, uh, do we need to make a motion to change the agenda? No. Okay. No. All right. So we'll just change uh, A to uh, C and B to, well. <laughs> yeah, just move everything down one. All right. Um, so we'll have the discussion about uh, amending the development code related to the uh, concept plans yeah. for conditional use permits. So this is kind of the Walt Memorial issue. Right? <laughs> <laughs> you want to take this as a banner issue or not? This is a Walt. Issue that we never got taken care of before he left us, but he had wanted after we went through that review of the marine store, and there were a lot of issues in it. He felt like it would be useful, like a lot of cities do, to have a concept plan review to give the person who's seeking the conditional use permit some feedback ahead of time before they put their whole thing together. Um, so a non-binding feedback. Sort of a non-binding at an earlier stage where they haven't had to hire engineers and all this stuff to give them just an idea of what the issues are, how we're looking at it. And so what I did was borrow a concept plan review um, section from, um, I think it's in the subdivision ordinance where we have a similar kind of thing that if someone is doing a bigger subdivision, they come in for a concept plan review ahead of time. And so that um, red type, that if you've got it in color, on the front page under 8.2, 
Number one is the idea of doing this concept plan review at sort of a sketch level that requires them to give you some information but not a full-fledged plan. It can either be a zoning administrator review, it could either be something he comes in and talks to Neil about and gets some feedback on, or Neil would have the prerogative of bringing it to the planning commission and or council if it seems like it's something where it'd be good to get all of your feedback ahead of time. Um, and then the second stage doesn't change at all. Then there's the official conditional use permit submittal. Um, what do you think of this? Is this, this is just for CUPs? Yeah. Right? And is this common in other communities around us? Um, it is for major subdivisions, for open space developments, and in some places for conditional use permits. Um, a lot of times it's kind of optional. Um, optional by the city or optional by the person that's submitting it? Either one. Either one. Yeah, um, I, I think this is optional. Yeah, we're we're putting this made. in as being optional. The word says yeah, made. this says made. I made it optional. What, what's the downside to this? Oh, well, I mean, this, is this is this taking time from our from our staff that is unnecessary, or I mean, what's what's the downside? To uh, you would be the primary person. Well, I mean, you? the downside may be to you know somebody because we, you know. We would generally do a staff review. If somebody calls up and wants to give us a sketch between Sherry and me, I think Sherry, you know, we basically give them an hour's worth of time right. to review it. I mean, on and beyond that, the meter starts clicking. Right. So, I mean, that's one of the things in my mind, you know, if I look at, uh, you know, if we're going to do this, obviously, you know, there would be a cost to the applicant probably to get a higher level to get a sense as to what the commission feels. I don't know, you know, Sherry, you know, but I mean, I look at you know even our fee schedule that we do have, you know, a for if it's and obviously there's a big difference between a CUP and uh, but a pre-application sketch review for open space is a $500 fee with a five plus a $500 escrow for a PUD it's uh, 500 and 500. So both of those. So for a conditional use permit, you know, I'm not sure, but I would think that if it's going to come here and Sherry's going to spend time on it, there's going to be a fee to it. And that way... Well, she would have to spend some time on it before we could take a look at it. It'd be it, up to would... you. It'd be up to what Neil or the administrator would feel. If they would feel like they can just spend an hour with the applicant and give them a, a review and identify the major issues, then it doesn't get to a level where it needs to involve me. But if it's something that's pretty complex, you know, he might want yeah. to involve other staff, whether it's me or the engineer or even the attorney. But at that point, if it becomes complex, wouldn't it be that Neil says, ah, you need to hire some help? <laughs> could be that, and could be the, the deal yeah. too, is you could mm -hmm. just say, you know, really. And then at that point, they're in the, they're in the process of going through the, the regular process. CUP process mm -hmm. anyways. Yeah. I think it's a really yeah. good idea. So when I was a builder, I would try and do that in a situation that involves setback variance or issues I didn't understand. And a lot of communities would do that. I don't know if it was written up like this, but for us it helped guide me as to, you know, should we pursue this and what do we have to do? So it was a wonderful informational tool because a lot of people, I'm assuming, for getting a CUP don't really understand the process, what all's involved, and it can be a great tool to guide them yeah, I think that's the hope that this would really yeah. help, you know, with someone like the guy from Big Marine Store who really, you know, they, they don't do this every day. Mm -hmm. So they really don't have any idea all the stuff they're going to have to pull together and whether this, you know, the stuff is going to fly or, or you can identify some really big deal. Like I think for him, we would have said stormwater is going to be a big issue here. And in the end, you're going to end up having to pay an engineer to do you a stormwater plan. Mm -hmm. So we'll kind of think about that. I'm trying to look for that table that we have in here that talks about everything that's a CUP and all the other permits that we have. Do you remember? What? I'm just trying to think of like what are what all requires a CUP. What it's kind generally of business sorts of things. Um, it can also be things like kennels. Um, so if you go to chapter two and go district by district. Depending on where it is. We have that. There's a table in here somewhere. It's um, like an addendum to the 
Oh, is that like what it is? Called called matrix? We've, yeah, well, yeah, exactly. We've looked at it before multiple times, actually. Yeah, but it. normally it wouldn't be a residential sort of development or anything related to a residential use. It would need more one of the like Commercial. uses in the village. Um, unless it was, unless it was like a uh, like a planned unit development or something like that. But that's but, but PUD, that's that's, that's going to that's going to have yeah. it. That's going to have it anyway. And I and a PUD requires a concept review anyway, just because yeah, it's so okay. complex. Okay. I was just trying to figure out like what kind of things we could potentially be seeing these concept. Well, things like the marine store. The marine store right. would be that. the yep. classic. And I just don't know how, yeah. how broad of a you know. Yeah. Using. Well, and this is optional. This is the way this is written. But it's kind of the same thing. I, I, I now I wonder. I wonder if there could be like a a smaller fee schedule or something. I mean, it, it, as a builder, I mean, and I know builders are always trying to keep the cost as low as possible, of course. But like, I mean, do you think it's something where somebody would come in and say, "Well, I'm willing to spend." Not 500, but maybe 100 or so, 75 or something to get a little bit of feedback without a dollar. You know, I if, think it, so. mm -hmm. if it requires some input from Sherry, right? But so. I mean, you know, right now, you know, pretty much an hour of Sherry's time. I mean, the city, you know, will absorb. They'll do that anyway. Part of our planning costs. Okay. Maybe spell but I mean, that you know, some of it. Like, once it becomes prepping for a meeting, yeah, you know, that's really when, in my mind, the meter starts running. Because of writing the staff report and all that, that's the point right. where it becomes okay. real bucks. But the the sort of hour, everybody sort of gets an hour up to an hour, um, and then and after that, it's it's okay. really mostly time into a staff report, much more so than looking at something and giving someone some comments about it. Yeah. Okay. I think it might. So you could probably, for a concept plan review, you could decide if you wanted to put on the fee schedule something like two hundred or. Mm -hmm instead of 500. I don't know why it's at yeah. 500, because typically, it might have assumed I was coming up here for a meeting, and we have we don't typically do that anymore. We do it as a conference call or something, so I don't usually have to come up. I think, it, I think it's going to be appropriate, probably, you know, outside of this meeting, to, for, to take a look at our, you know, planning fee schedule. Yeah. It's been, a, it's been a few years. But that would be separate from, from inputting this, but it would right. be something where there might be a charge for it, but you guys can handle that on the back side. Mm -hmm. Okay, what do we have to do? Well, we have right to decide whether or not we want to put this in, and again, keep in mind it's optional. Yeah. yeah. Um, and it, it sounds like builders yeah, might sure. find it beneficial. I think we ought to put it in. N Neil yeah. and Sherry could determine the fees without, yeah, we can. you know. For what it's worth, it looks like the CUPs in almost every district that we have is essentially something that is income producing. Is basically what I mean. Everything here is produces income, and that covers home-based businesses too, right? Well, um, they don't. They're usually home occupations as long as you don't have any employees or create any additional traffic or operate outside the buildings. There really is no fee. Okay. But it does talk about accessory apartments to commercial use and accessory apartments to residential use as being CUPs. Yeah. In the Village mixed use in the village district yeah, yeah. because of those issues about parking and some of that. But right. again, the it's income producing, so I guess right. we just lump it as income producing. Yeah. Cemeteries, I think, are still income producing, right? I guess yeah. it's things that are, that would have yeah, right. the potential for <laughs> impact. <laughs> you have to pay your, for your property <laughs> for life to be buried. <laughs> it's a one-time fee, but you got to pay for it. I'll write you a check. <laughs> so, um, do you think this would be good I to put so. up for a public I, hearing next time? I, I, I yeah. think, yeah, I think we should. I don't yeah. see any. Yeah. yeah. Thing wrong with that. Okay. Except for the fees, I guess. Right. And that's up to the council. So, yeah. we'll, we'll take a look at what it would cost for a flip. Yeah. Right. I wish I knew where that table was. Okay. All right, so that moves us on to the. Um, uh, con Accessory no, that's system. concept. So, solar energy systems? Yeah, so remember the city decided to stop allowing the big solar projects. But when we took those out, that we don't have any regs now for people who want to do accessory <laughs> systems, you know, just something that's part of their house. Um, and so we probably need some requirements about that, which is what this is getting at is is these are not these are not primary uses on a property. Instead they're 
the things that somebody might attach to a house or a barn or whatever the primary use is, or have either on a roof or separately um, to power their their residential use or business use. We tabled this for you, Jan. Well, I <laughs> wanted, you. but I wasn't going to ask. <laughs> yeah. Um, and so there was a question, and I think it was Jan's at the last time we talked about this about whether um, the city should permit small community solar gardens as an accessory use. The council looked at that option and recommended that they not be included. That it just, it's too hard to decide what size is an accessory. Um, well, I thought accessory meant it wasn't the primary use on the property. But still, does that mean by square footage or? Wow. To them, it feels like okay. it is a separate use. That it's not just that it's not just supporting a use on the property, the primary use on the property. That a solar garden is its own sort of use. Um, and I, I don't know if you remember more of the conversations. It's been a while since I remember, but I think their sense was it was just too hard to. When I think you know, once you go on beyond, you know. You know, the accessory use benefits that resident. Yes, you may sell something to the grid, but the primary benefit is to the resident, which makes it accessory. Yeah. You know, if you are saying, well, you know, somebody's buying half of this, you know, half of this solar garden or, uh, you know, that's on their property, well, then, you know, then it becomes an inc income producing right. thing as opposed to somebody well, offsetting their cost and maybe making a little bit of money well, by selling back to the grid. I think the people that I've talked to who do both, they're selling energy to help pay for the solar install, and that was their purpose in doing it. Um, I'm, I don't know the, uh, the legalities of it, but I'm wondering what the legal basis is for telling people they can't connect to the grid. Well, I don't think in here you're still connected to the grid. Right. Well, they can't. They can't. They just Absolutely. can't sell it. No, well, they can I mean, sell you know, it too. they're going to sell it. I mean, it's you know, it's. But you know, if you take, you know, what you know, in your instance, you know, you have you own a share, right? You know, well, two presumably shares. two shares because we have two accounts, right? Of that, but there are other people who have invested in right. that unit on your property, right? Okay, if that was a hundred percent jams, right? There'd be no issue. Right. It'd be an accessory use. Mm -hmm. Okay. But so Jan, so Jan's case would would fall into the old sort of solar ordinance, which is now gone. Right. So somebody going forward would not be able to install a solar garden, is what we call yours, right? Well, right. it's only a solar garden because it was. It's it's being uh, our rate is determined by statute under the solar garden statute. Right. That's right. what makes it solar garden, not that it's accessory or primary. They're okay. two separate things. Okay. But they're, they're they're really not conjoined in any way. Sure. Okay. Okay. And well, that's and that's what I keep I keep feeling like I was sort of skirting around that. Well, but the Be, because but the, because if you this, if you right, but if you say that they can sell back. It's that statute which requires Excel to pay a certain, to pay the retail price instead of a price that would be, say, a wholesale price, which is what they would do otherwise. Well, so so that, that's why it comes into play here. I think the selling back to the grid is not the issue. It's the subscri subscriber right. thing that is the issue. If it's yeah. solely okay. you or if it's other people? Yeah, so it's solely you and you're selling it back to the grid and Excel does whatever they're going to do with it, it doesn't matter. Right. But if you're saying, okay, now I'm selling it to all my neighbors in addition to, you know, and not necessarily selling it to Excel or, you know, however that all works. Yeah. Um, well, um, my counter to that is, and you know that I'm biased because we've got this on our property and we feel it's great. I'm not personally real happy with these larger installs and I think that you're discouraging smaller ones from going in which is what I think we'd rather have rather than the big ones. So it's a matter of size? Pardon? It's a matter of size then? Well I think it's a matter of how intrusive it is to your neighbors and and to people driving by. Well that's I mean, the same as the big ones. It's a matter of how intrusive it is. 
that well, well, well but by nature the big ones are more intrusive well i mean yeah, like like so. ours to, you could fit nine of ours on an acre and and you can see it from the road but we've got three neighbors who know they know it's there and they have not seen it yet and they drive by it all the time so it's not intrusive in the way that the one at manning and 97 is Correct. which is it is that kind of a interesting tale from beginning to end on how they're handling that one. Yeah. Well, so I think the council is just feeling that they want to get out of the business of the bigger ones and the ones where there get to be the issues about how they do look to neighbors and all that for a while. Yeah. Yeah. And so their advice to you is they would rather not have that come forward as a part of this ordinance, that they would rather this one only apply to people who were, bought, who were getting a system to power their house or their or their business business or, or whatever. Um, I guess the question is, do you want to go go forward knowing they may very well turn you down, or do you want to stay with the just the accessories for now? Well, the, the do you know what the vote was on it? I mean that they did. I would say it was pretty much. It was a majority, mm -hmm. wasn't it? Yeah. So it won't make much difference what we argue here. They've already made up their decision. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, I think they just want to get out of it for. I mean, I I, 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 get where you're going, where you're going with that, Jan. But I yeah, do, I've, and and it does make sense to me a little bit that you could say, well, if it's a quarter of an acre on a 60 acre parcel, whole, what difference does it make? The but, whole point of doing that is to make it easier for people to put in these installs and these co-located one gig installs is not what that was intended to be. I know because I helped those reps put that package together 10 years ago when we were first talking about this. The whole point was to try to get more people to be able to afford solar. Small solar, yeah. Right, right. And, and this business of the five gig systems is an abomination. I mean, it, it is of what the original intent was. Mm -hmm. So the whole thing is not the way it was originally meant to be done. Right. Um, so I'm, I, 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 we can, I don't see the point in recommending something they're not going to uh, recommend, but well, I, if we have a good reason for recommending it, I think we should still go back and recommend it. I just don't. We'd have we'd have to get consensus among us, right? And to recommend, you know, uh, and we'd have to we'd have to number one, we'd have to pick a size that would yeah. be the max size. Yeah. So that's going to be our difficult thing. Well, and that's going to vary depending on the size of the property. I mean, we have a 39k system, and that would be huge on a lot, say, in town. Right. It, it would not. Wouldn't work. It wouldn't right. work. On a 60 acre parcel, not such a big deal. Or an 80 acre parcel, right. yeah. It's right. Does that just serve your host jam? Uh, we have a business, a house, and and then uh, there's three other subscribers on it. Okay. And Because it is part of, the, of that uh, program. And my understanding is most of those uh, <coughs> subsidies were going to be ending at the end of either 2017 or 2018. So it may be a moot point very soon anyway. I thought it was 17. Yeah, that's, I'm not sure, but I'm, it could be. I sure. think it is because that's why the Wolford guys wanted to get in for mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's right now. The incentives it's, have decreased anyway, but there's, you know, who knows where things will go politically because yeah. the solar industry is lobbying and you never know. Yeah. Right. So is there anything stopping these solar companies from getting more creative and going to a homeowner? Let's say the homeowner needs 20 panels to power his house, go to him and say, well, let's put in 60 panels and you're going to well, get that's the whole but that's, that's, that's the what whole we're talking context about. of this discussion yeah. i think is it yeah, defining right, what right now we allow we have you know allowed permits building permits for both you know obviously roof mounted and ground mounted systems but we've treated them as accessory structures accessory structures to the residential use of the property. Right. Okay. So I mean that's really the essence of this of the discussion. Is this subordinate to the residential use of it? Or you sit there and as you said, you know, we start grouping these and all of a sudden, wait a minute, you know, like Jan, you know, yeah. Jan's house only needs twenty percent. We use fifty percent of it actually, but between the house and the business? Mm -hmm. Yeah. The business is the major consumer. Right? Yeah, I would think so. Um, and I'll tell you uh, that our income on it is going to be less than a thousand dollars. So it's not a huge amount. Yeah, but I mean, I look at I look today at you know we've uh, approved six systems this year. I mean, the one from Polar 
was by was by far the largest. Yeah, and those uh -huh. are those are all considerably larger than ours, right? Yeah. Well, no, the one on Pilar. It's 14. 14. 14. Oh, that's oh, that. Oh, I remember that yeah. one. Yeah. Okay. That was, that was small. That was actually two banks. Yeah. Yeah. That was just an individual system. But I yeah. mean, and if you if you look at the others that we've approved, they're you know between 8.55 and 9.975 kilowatts, and in terms of size, the size of the panels, somewhere between 600 and 700 square feet. That's it. So based upon that, you know, it seems like that's the sweet spot for a residential property. And that was what, what Wright County did a, a big look at this. They've had a lot of it out there. And they found that typically for a residential property, you didn't have to have more than 10 kilowatts. But that when people started to want to add in a barn or something to it, um, you yeah. could get up to 20. So their max for accessory solar in their ordinance is 20. Well, and, that, um, and the, the question there is summer or winter, because they're going to produce not quite half during the winter on average as they do in the summer. So if somebody wants, like I, that one on Pilar, didn't they want to uh, try to use that as their only power source or primary power source or not? Yeah, they're connected to the grid. They are connected, they are connected. Okay. to the grid. I'm trying to remember what but he I mean, said. But if you're trying to look at it for a commercial business, one way of doing it is setting a limit for residential and then have another limit for commercial yeah, that you know maybe is you know the demonstrated capacity you know their demonstrated usage capacity well you can see that pretty business. easily from a year's worth of mm -hmm. electric bills sure if i mean if if unless they're just starting up mm -hmm. but that's pretty easy to to get a ballpark can you but instead of going like <clears throat> a blanket 20 for everybody you know that may be the route to go is you know, limited at 10 for residential and then for commercial, you know, you know, have it be a factor of their uh, but, electrical consumption. But that would, if you limited it to 10 for residential, would you be limiting it to, would that include like a farm? Like say, for instance, Christine's farm? I would think, you know, that's a business. Okay. Yeah. In my mind. But like, is that how we see somebody it? Else's though? Farm. In, that what's that? Somebody else's farm. Or somebody, somebody else's farm, farm. yeah. Mm -hmm. a, a, no, small, a small farm that's, yeah, I'm just thinking, I'm just thinking somebody's got a few milk cows or something like that. I don't know if that even exists around here anymore, but. Um, we could make, farm. we could clarify yeah, well, that to say 10 for residential use and the demonstrated need for a business, including an agricultural business. But, an, but calling it a business, because is not necessarily, won't necessarily get you there because, for instance, a hobby farm is not, a, a, from tax perspective, is not a business. Well, you could say agricultural use then instead of business. But you look at a hobby farm, unless they're running a corn dryer or what else, what do they really have beyond, you know, much more than residential lighting? Uh, yeah, I don't know. Well, I, 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 a, a milking parlor? I don't know. I, if they're I, foolish I, enough to be a hydroponic farm, they'll be use a lot of electricity. <laughs> <laughs> Are we afraid if we go to 20 that then we'll get a bunch of these and they'll be big and they'll, they'll just put it on the grid? How big is yours? Concerned about? 39K, 40K. 40, okay. I mean, so the pillar one I mine felt like was twice pretty, that size. you know, for 14, when Modern. we looked at that, it wasn't that big of a deal. It probably could have been a little bigger and yeah. nobody would have cared. Do you, Tom, do you remember how big ours is? Mm -hmm. And that that's basically twice the size you're talking about. Yeah. So half the size of that. Yeah, and, where you're, and yours is, uh, it could have been bigger, like I agree with you. It's, that is not obtrusive at all. But some of it's scale of the property, too. Yeah. Right, yeah. exactly. And yeah. we're 800 feet away from the road. Right. Neil, can you speak a little bit to the city-owned solar garden, the one that we put on the fire station? Yeah, it powers the fire station and any excess goes to the grid. How big is that one? Boy, oh boy, I'd have to look it up. I just curious sure. whether the well, it's, guess. Not, it's not accessory or anything because it doesn't, I mean, what do you, how much extra are we saying? Perfect. It all depends. I mean, there are some months, you know, summer months where, uh, you know, our electric bill is near zero. Then in winter, you know, it, it doesn't perform as well. So, Here's, here's a thought that I have. If something's mounted on a rooftop, I couldn't care less how big it is. 
it could be 400 kilowatts and it wouldn't make a bit of difference to me because yeah and and, and then it would be proportional to the size of the house right yeah. right i mean and that's how this is written it's the size limit is only for ground mounted systems oh oh okay. Oh, yeah. oh okay and that's what we're calling a solar garden well then um, well, then that no, they could also be on a roof of solar garden a solar garden could probably be on a roof also yeah. a sol the solar garden is a specific state program okay. that helps to fund gardens that Create are there to create energy for a set of subscribers, people who it's, subscribe okay. to it. It's, it's basically to make garden. Excel pay back money that they owe to us. Okay. And, well, I think that if and they that's subscribe the big part of it. Sell back the business right. Right. So yeah, so someone could have right you know could mm -hmm. have these okay. on a barn or yep. whatever yeah. on a roof, and we're not proposing to limit a size. Okay, for yeah. they could have a million kilowatts on the roof, and we don't care. <laughs> we don't care because it's basically going to look like a roof. <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. That's what I'm thinking. Yeah, and then as they come out with the um, shingle panels right. and right. the glass right. the window panels, then it'll be all part of the house. It won't make any difference. Yeah. Yeah. Or if they're panels. on the side of a building, they basically look like a window. So yeah. we're not. So the size right. question is more for the ground yeah. mounted system okay. where it's separate from the building and it, it is its own, you know, and so it gets okay. to be like almost another building on the property. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that one we have is, I think, about 60 by 100 approximately. So what what do we have for recommendations right now? Well, so, so yeah. we've got 20 kilowatts in size. Well, who wants to make a recommendation, I should say? Well, I like it the way it is. I do have one question. Um, in in 4.33, it says, um, second sentence, permitted to the extent that it meets the current annual electoral consumption of the primary use. It, that's a condition, right? <clears throat> Right, four uh, the, the very first yeah, section, yeah. Okay. Do, do we want to say that? Permitted. It meets the current annual electric. And maybe electric we want to say primarily or something like that. Its primary purpose is to. Well, if you're talking about a new building, then it's kind of hard to show a history on the property. Yeah. Well, it, it could just be partial consumption and be okay, right? This might yeah. Be. And this one seems says you got to have has to meet the annual consumption. It's too limited. To the extent that it meets the current. To the extent that it. Um, Not meets. No. Meets it, 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 it doesn't need yeah, to be. I think we, well, it's the same that it is permitted if it meets. I think annual so might just take, take that, that out. out. Just or right. yeah. It just confuses the issue. Or, or what if you said something like that is permitted for for use primarily, primarily by to, the existing use on the parcel or something like that? Primarily to provide energy for the primary use on yeah. the parcel. So how would you get an idea of uh, what the uh, use would be for a new for a new building. Well, I think you can make well, estimates. Can make yeah. estimates. Yeah. There's yeah. genius people who can do that. Right, There's but I mean that that doesn't. It's it's not uh, addressed here. Yeah, Is that's why we're trying to get rid of it. Don't they have to do that? Uh, don't for when you get a building permit, energy calculations. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, I'm not saying you can't do it. I'm mm -hmm. saying it's not addressed here. Well, well isn't that saying? isn't that the point of this of the of the sentence of that sentence is to say. The point of this system is to is for for you to provide energy for the primary use on on okay. the parcel. parcel. It's it's the word current being, there being that's throwing me. The current, the current annual electrical consumption. Okay, that's well we should, we're taking that out. That whole yeah, sentence. we took we're that out. Okay, that whole all right, sentence. I'm behind. Yeah. I'll I'll catch yeah. up. Permitted. It is permitted to the extent that it is that it primarily provides energy for the primary use on the parcel. Yeah, something like that. That yeah. defines it pretty good. Yeah ties it to the house. Okay. So then it talks about... Okay, and then does, do we say something about if they have a business on the property? No, we well, just... Well, that would be the primary use. That would be the primary use then. Okay, so how about if you have a house and a, and a business like we do? How do? How is that handled? Well, those are the two primary uses. <laughs> well, I mean, primary it's, egg, it's a, a farm. Well, no, how did you just write that? Because I think that would work. How did you what? just wordsmith that? I think um, that would still work. Primary use on the parcel. Use, the SES is permitted 
to primarily provide energy for the primary use on the parcel? Primarily. The parcel. So primarily use it for the primary use, but it can be used for other things too. Yeah. It can be or if you want to there and use the primary the and permitted accessory uses on the yeah. property. Primary and yeah. permitted accessory uses. There you go. Consensus. All right. So A talks about building the building integrated and roof mounted ones are allowed in all districts. Size. Any yeah. size and shape because yeah. it's on the roof. Yeah. The and then it's the ground mounted one where the suggestion here yeah. is for okay. 20 as a max. Um, and we could add, as Neil suggested, tw up to 20 for residential or um, to meet the demonstrated need of a business. Yeah. I think the other limiting factor, though, in here that, that weighs off the 20 is how we look at the calculation of the size of the accessory structure. You know, if you look at it and, you know, Jan's, how big were yours? 60 uh, by 40 100. 40K, basically. But physically. Oh, 100. 60 by 100. 60 by 100? That, I mean, that's the footprint that it takes. Well, that's so. a good point. Are you talking okay, about Okay, so then if you, you know, then you look at it and let me just, you know, for reference, pass these down. These are kind of our accessory structure guidelines. Maybe you can get based upon size of property and whether it's ag. Smaller panels that still produce 20 kilowatts in their system. You know, so you know, yeah, if, you, if you look at this, you know, there's the question because if you're limited by this size, you know, the you know, the panel face, and you know, one of the things is the panel face is going to be like that, it's not going to be like that. Right. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, when we interpret this, it's, you know, the physical dimensions of the building. Well, for a solar panel, how do you measure it? Right. Because, and that's where, I mean, the ones we looked at, if you're going to say it's the surface of the well, solar just, face. When I tell you 60 by 100, that's the measurement from corner to corner of the footprint, okay. and when you go up, up to a corner, you're touching one edge of the pan. Yeah. Okay, so let me get all crazy here. What if solar panels did not count towards the accessory structure limit? I think that's the other big question for you is whether they should or should not. I don't think they should. Because when we think about pervious surface you and impervious surface, pervious we surface. don't count them. Which I think is kind of silly. But as, well, long as, as long as people put, that's another argument. put vegetation yeah. underneath them rather yeah. than concrete. Yeah, as long as they're not on a huge concrete pad, right. it, they shouldn't be counted. If Wait. they're ground mounted, they shouldn't be counted as Which is another issue that I just, I think is wrong. I mean, if we count the roof shedding water, that's impervious. If you count the deck, which water can run through, as impervious, it, I don't know well, why the panel... It seems inconsistent, shut. doesn't it? It's super inconsistent. I, I've disagreed that with, since day one, but that's a different topic. It is well, what the I watershed districts have agreed to as long as it's vegetated underneath, so... Yeah. And rain doesn't always fall straight down. I mean, that's yeah. the other it, thing. It, well, I mean, they're, if, they, if they are open, underneath. they're more... And you got to admit, they are more open underneath than a deck. Well, I can tell you right now that there is snow completely underneath all of our panels. There you go. And it's that deep. Well, I think you... Because I'm my boots really that drop the topic. You could put vegetation underneath the deck, and you could also have snow underneath the deck. Well, <laughs> fair enough. Well, I, I, enough. I, I, well, I yeah. agree with that. I, I agree with you, to, to mo mostly. But I still say, because uh, he, here's, here's the deal, is we're getting rid of the main solar ordinance, and I completely agree with that. But I also think that people need to put more solar on their property and I think personally that so that that this should not count towards their accessory towards their well, accessory. Well, the especially on the smaller lot sizes I think yeah. it's going to be almost impossible for people to put a anything other than a roof system yeah yeah on yeah. a smaller property yeah well, is, is that the main reason for counting it as as one of those structures because of the smaller lots and the space it would take I, up? I think it's just a question for you whether I mean in some communities this seems to people like another building and like it should count yeah. in other places people want to encourage solar they don't know that this will be here forever they're just from more of a sort of values, we want to encourage solar. Yeah. People well, are are willing. It's, it's to also it. lowering the amount of uh, the the need for having to build another power plant. 
Yeah. And so it, it, whether people realize it or not, they're benefiting. Yeah. Well, so it's a sort of value judgment. I would agree. I would agree with what you're saying. I mean, I'm maxed out on accessory structures and size on my property, and there's plenty. There's 9.5 acres to still put solar yeah. panels on. So yeah. I, I agree. Yeah, they shouldn't be counted. Okay. So which. We, um, so where are we at? So so that goes takes us back to the to the actual size that we're willing to allow. I mean, is twenty kilowatts enough for residential? Well, I think it's probably I, enough. And do you it, just? I do, think what you're seeing is it's about nine. You know, I would, nine. Yeah, you know, you know the range. You know, we had on and beyond the fourteen, but they actually had two different banks yeah. for solar panels. Yeah. But for the ones that only had either roof or on one bank. 8.55 to 9.975, and most of those are in the nines. So I think you know the 10 that you referenced before is probably a solid number for a residence. Do you? What was the experience with Wright County? You said they said had they said the same that for the typical residents, it was 10, but they wanted to allow for people, you know, maybe doing a, a ag building or something like that. But for residential use, they felt that 10 was adequate for virtually every residence that they had looked at. So if you're going to do that, I mean, you know, step back, you know, based upon that reworked first sentence, you know, is that the limit? What do you need to serve your property? No, that's not how, the, I don't think your first sentence as rewritten cuts it off at all. Well, and I don't, and I, I don't think, I agree with you, I don't think it cuts off, it's just the primary, yeah. you know, you know, that kind of makes it accessory to the primary use. But I also don't think that you should limit it to what they use on the property for several reasons. One, because they, they often don't perform as well as, and, you know, and, as advertised. So and their the performance 20, will go down every year. Okay. So, so they should, you know, so we should give, have, give them some room to build big, but also because if I was going to build solar panels, I would want to be able to sell some of that electricity. So I wouldn't want it to be just like, I use 10 kilowatts and that's all I get, because I'm never going to pay for my system. I mean, it's going to take 20 years to pay for the system. Well, but the if Pilar, I make it 15, Pilar one mm -hmm. was 14, right? Yeah. Because yeah. he yeah. wanted to do a little more. Yeah. Did he, yeah. How much, did he have an estimated use? That he would use. He, he wants to get off the grid totally, which isn't everybody's goal, I don't think. But that's his. Way. So he assumed that he would use ten and sell four back or something. So we in never the summertime, asked him that he would be selling, and the wintertime he'd be using everything. Sure. Yeah. And yeah. probably buying. And probably buying. I just have a question. Do you think that this, if we're talking about this being obtrusive, is not what this whole discussion yeah, started with? Yeah, it is. Yeah. yeah. So if we're talking about how obtrusive something is, I bet you anything that 10K now is going to look physically different than 10K in 10 years. In 10 years. Yeah. Yeah. Or probably five years. Yeah, yeah. yeah. or yeah. less. So yeah. does it make more sense to limit how, uh, how visually obtrusive something is size-wise? Well, I think say, the question, you can also, we can have a performance standard that says yeah. they have to be screened from view from the public right-of-way or something like that for the ground-mounted ones. And you can and then you start getting neighbor neighbor issues like we had and screening on all four sides and right. if you want to get back into that. I know it's but, a question about what. But if we, we just do. say you know Jan, how how many kilowatts did you say? It's just forty. No, 40. It, it's okay. designed as a thirty nine k unit, but we have never gotten more than thirty two out of it. And okay. and Even next year summer. and yes yes at its peak we've never gotten more than thirty two out of it because they're not one hundred percent efficient. Okay, at best so they're around thirty percent. And they'll get better in the future, but not only do you not get the full amount out of it, but every year you'll lose about two to two to five percent of that production, because just because of the old wires or something. Well, it has to do with the the silicon wafers breaking down and what mm -hmm. have you. Okay. The so physics of it. If we work if we work backwards right now, kind of, and say that somebody wants to have um, ten, assuming that that's one fourth of that, instead so of sixty by one hundred, sixty by twenty five, we can figure out that square feet would be about. 10k. Well, it would be 30 by 20. Well, yeah, okay, depending on which way you're going. My point is that we, is there a way that we could just kind of estimate and say this is what we deem as more, you know, more square footage as opposed to a kilowatt as a kilowatt size. And then if you totally depends on the site. I mean, if if you if if you look at it, I mean, you know, one way, one way of doing it is our. You know, we allow 
you know, the one detached garage, 24 by 36, which is 720, mm -hmm. I think, yep. You know, seven, 720 square feet gets you, right now, 10 kilowatts. And my point of the size... So it's kind of like the size of a, of a two-car garage. Right. Mm -hmm. My point of the size share is that if you can fit 40 on there, because in a few years the panels are now smaller and you can back, you can fit more on that thing, well then great, you can make more energy. But as of now, this is what we think is intrusive or not. Well, yeah. I think so that's what... Yeah, size, what size, size limit encourages future efficiency. Yeah. yeah. I, sure. that's, I think what Neil is getting at is saying, okay, <clears throat> a 10 case system is going to be sites kind of like a double car garage. Yeah. Right. Does that seem like it's kind yeah. of fair for everybody to be able to yeah. have that on yeah. their property and it's not going to be considered intrusive? As long as we have the screen provision as well, because there are circumstances, I'm well, sure. Right, if it's in a front yard or something, I'd be right. almost Or it's on a tiny lot or something. Yeah. So 10K? Yeah, well, 10. As the max? For residential and then a state Well, the size. Well, we're talking size. You're just talking 720 square feet is what you're talking about. Well, I was suggesting, I was, maybe I'm the only one, suggesting a square foot. As opposed to? As opposed to a kilowatt. And if you, two years from now, if somebody comes up with a super panel that, and that can get you 40K, you've you've knocked them out of the box. Right. So, so we say that's up where to 800 square feet, the panels can be up to 800 square feet. How, how, how much square footage square do you feet. need to get 20 kilowatts or 15? Twice as much. Well, so, you know, if you're looking at to get 10, you would probably need 700. Okay, so I think it should be more like 1,400 then. Or at least, or, uh, okay, so for one thing, I don't, I, I think it would be ill-advised for us to make this more restrictive than the guy on Pilar and make him out of compliance. I think that would be silly. So... At least, it should be at least as big as his, as the standard. Um, so something what, like 1,200 square, square feet, feet or 1,500 square feet? He has like 25 feet. acres or something. Okay, so it's, it's not like a five acre line no. or two acres. But it's all wood, so he had to put it in it. Yeah, and then I think that that does encourage future efficiency if there's better panels and... What did you just say, Sherry? Like 1,200 or 1,500? Yeah, something like that. I mean, oh, 1,500. 1,500 square like feet? That's like double... Yeah, what is... What is 15 in like size by size? Do you know? Anybody? Kind of ish? Well, most of these well, are 40. Kind of 40. 30 by 50, would that be? 30 by 40 most is 1200, you know? Yeah. 30 by 40 is 40 by 40 40 40 40 40 wide. 40 by 40. <laughs> 40 Good by job, 40. 4 times 4. Yeah. <laughs> so you're. 40 times 30. 40 by 30 is, is your 1,200 that you're talking about. Yeah. So it would be like somebody could have a pole, like a pole building size a, yeah. thing. A 40 by 30 pole building is Except, not that except, big. I mean, you know, big. a lot of times these are in strings. So, right. you know, you look at, you know, typically the footprint on, you know, some of these, I think, are like 12 feet. So if you went, you know, 1,400 feet, you're looking at, you know, 12 feet wide and 120 feet long. Yeah. Yeah, and like ours, when I gave you those dimensions, there's a space in between them mm -hmm. that's probably close to the width of the panels themselves. Yeah, 100, if you're 12 feet wide, that's 115 feet long. Mm -hmm. Another way to do it would be to say you can automatically have um, 800 square feet, and with an administrative permit, you can oh. go up to 1,600. And that would mean someone here would have to look at it and sort of say, Screen, how does this look on the site? Size, you know, if yeah. someone's on a 10-acre lot, yeah. they may not care. Yeah. Yeah. Um, maybe right. that's, a, that's a real typical kind of zoning thing is to say up to a certain minimum you can have it. And then if you just, go beyond that, there's an administrative permit right. involved. Like would that. you be comfortable yeah. with something like does that? Does that include that or, or, you know, run them through for a conditional use permit over a certain Right. For, for on beyond that, mm -hmm. you probably would think about a conditional use permit. And maybe we should consider that because then your neighbors start to get involved because neighbors start to say well there's this giant solar panel thing up right next to my house so maybe a CUP is so 800 is permitted mm -hmm. and six up to 1600 double that size or 1200 is permitted and then I'd up, go 800 permitted 800 permitted and beyond that a CUP big mm -hmm. enough for you yep. guys okay with 800 I'd, I'd like smaller better than bigger 
and then have a CUP for something a bigger. A CUP for yeah. beyond that, which is then when they have to start showing how they might screen it or... Yeah. So you yeah. said 8 to 16 or 8 to 12? 800, I think you said, was permitted, was permitted and comfortable yeah. with that, because that gets us to the 10 or a little more, actually, yep. yeah. probably. And it's also, it's easy to explain, it's roughly the size of a two-car garage. Is it anything yeah. above? Yeah. And then you said anything up Anything on a rooftop. Yeah. So anything saying? above the 800 would take a CUP. No. Yeah. Oh, up to, well, up to 16. No, right? didn't say up that. to 16 is administrative. Up to 16 or anything over. And then over 16 is a CUP? Hmm. Because then Wait, it gets no, I, I, you know what? I would, you know, <laughs> no, no, no. Okay. Hold on. Oh, that's what I thought. Hold we were on. Doing. No, I didn't think we were doing. Okay. Neil was well, saying 800. 800 just straight allowed, up. and yep. ab anything above that is a CUP. Anything above right. Right. Okay. Okay. right. okay. But like then they're that. not going to get too big because we already are, have stated that it's, you know, the amount that you, the intent, you know, kind of that first sentence was kind of the intent that it's to meet the electrical needs of the primary Marshall. and permitted accessory uses of the property. Well, so we're still so that, that kind of becomes self-limiting. And then if it's a business and they're really wanting 3,000 square feet of solar panels, then they're in here for a conditional use permit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. That's a good idea. Or else, they can, you know, for the business, you know, a good, you know, it's, I think in most cases, it's going to be a flat roof. They'll it doesn't matter. They'll be encouraged the to do over roof. Yeah. Well, it's it's going to change so fast, the technology right. anyway. But you okay. still have to have the right directional exposure yeah, yeah, and no yeah. trees. And yeah, so here's another thought. Does roof mounted also count the ones that are on a roof, but they're on a structure? So for instance, a flat roof. That's with, still roof mounted. That's still roof mounted. But if, no, if, you, if you look at here, you know, in the descriptions, and I think, you know, the language that Sherry has posed are really good, that, uh, yeah. Comply with primary structure setbacks, uh, not to exceed maximum building height, so that you know that puts a limit okay, on it. Sure. Uh, Installs here, you know, compatible with the building architecture. Okay. Shall not extend beyond the perimeter. I think there are enough. There's enough language okay. in there that says, you okay. know. Someone can't cantilever a great big one out beyond. The <laughs> right. <laughs> it's it's, it's on the roof. I'm making a porch. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> is that the only contentious parts of this? I think those are some of the big issues. Really, the other, you know, those typical performance standards comply with the code. Um, utility notifications, safety measures, what happens when you abandon them, all that's kind of standard stuff. I think the big issues are the size. Um, and we said, and now we're saying 800 square feet for the size and is you could, permitted. And you're on number three right now, changing yeah. that on yeah. number three. Okay. Yeah. And then beyond that, we'll say they're not considered accessory structures. So they don't have to comply with the limits. What do you do for lot coverage? And that's a question. And then, you want and it then, to count or not? And then I propose that it should not count towards lot coverage. As long as it's um, as long as, as it's, it's not vegetated underneath. Yeah, as long as it's yeah. vegetated underneath. Or as long as it's not impervious. Okay. How about shorelands? Although and that's the other big question. We want to allow these in shoreland districts. Um, we were talking about last time. And here, let's. Lakes. I Before we do take, this, I was, I was going to have this for our discussion on Shoreland District, and I'll pass these out just so that you get an idea of the extent. Because you got to remember, our Shoreland Districts extend 1,000 feet yeah. from public waters. Yeah. So just take a look yeah. at this. Then they also extend from the, you know, from the tributaries. But if you just take a look at this and what the area within the city that you've wiped out, wow. <laughs> yeah, I would say huge. I would say that it does apply to shoreland districts. Yeah. You can, then you start you looking at wetland yeah. setbacks have an and everything. One yeah. In a, in a, yeah, yeah, and um, and they still have to. These are still accessory structures. So other than the lot coverage requirement, they still have to meet all the other requirements, which means, yeah. which means setback from the lake right. and setback from the other lot lines and all that stuff. They still yeah. have to meet all that. They still so would have to meet those requirements. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Is the abandonment that's done? Nothing's um, done. No. So what if the yeah. what if the lot owner doesn't dispose of a dead system? 
can the city go in and remove it and assess them for it? If a structure is a hazardous or nuisance structure, does the city have the right under your nuisance ordinance to take I think it out? you have that in here that it shall constitute a public nuisance. Yeah. yeah. On the page 2F, mm -hmm. let me scoot down. So if something's a nuisance, down, yeah. there's a separate ordinance that the city has outside the zoning ordinance for nuisances, and the city has a right to remove a nuisance and then charge the owner for the cost. I think your city does. Almost every city mm -hmm. has that. Because yeah, they are hazardous waste. So then it has to be called a public nuisance. If we call it that in here, then the city could use that nuisance ordinance to take it away. Because I, I think at some point this is going to be like the big dish antennas, the ones that used to be 15 feet high. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that'll be junk. They're, yeah. they're over 90% recyclable at this time. I don't know what the future holds. Right, nobody does. But it sounds like it's covered anyway. And then yeah. do you want to have something about being screened from view from the right-of-way? Or do you want to take that very last item out and say, if this is an accessory structure, we don't care? I, I, I don't care about screening for its <coughs> accessory. Okay. Even if it's out on the roadway? It's not going to be on the roadway, because accessory structures need to be behind the oh. setback for the primary. Right. Except so it's going to be side yard or backyard? Except on shoreline. Except on shoreline. Well, in which case it moves forward to the roadside. No, the right, road which is road. where you want yeah, it. Which is fine. That's where we want it on. on or beside I don't want to look at it. Driving by, I really don't. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't I, either. Well, but. judging by the social media in town, there's a lot of people that are on uh, direct opposite sides of that. Some people really like it and other people really hate it. Yeah. And there aren't that many people in the middle. Yeah. At least that are very vocal about it. How do you want to put it forward for a public hearing to include the screening or not? I, I would say to not worry about the screening personally. You guys, have you guys? I would say, it, yeah, leave it in there. Leave we still there. have, um, don't we have some discretion on how much is screened? Yeah, sure. It says screened from view from the public right away to the extent possible using setbacks, berming, existing vegetation, landscaping. We've used the phrase to the extent possible before. Yeah, where did that come into issue? Well, part uh, of it gets field. to be like, it's been on oh, the solar yeah. project. Like if there's an a opening for a road, mm -hmm. clearly you can't yeah. screen it completely. Yeah. Or right. if there's a wetland, you can't force can't somebody you. to put plants through a wetland. But I think the argument, I think. With, I, I think to me, to me, the term extent possible is meaningless. I, I, I think it do, I think it somebody can make an excuse that nothing is possible. Mm -hmm. Well, take a look at where ours is. We're almost 800 feet back from the road, but the road is 45 feet above where the solar panels are. So yeah. it's tough. The only way that it can be screened effectively is for the county to put something at the edge of the road because that's where it drops off. Right. right. And so we've put the trees in that were required. And they're downhill from where the, I mean, it's going to be 40 years before those trees are tall enough to do anything to block that. Well, yeah. I think the other issue that yeah. you have is, you know, you've got a lot of lots in the city where people don't have a lot of trees. And, you know, drive through, you know, some of the subdivisions, you know, you know, 197th, you know, between, I'm thinking between like Oxboro and Olinda in that area. And how can you screen those from the road? Yeah. You know, because they're, they're yeah. so wide open, yeah. it's almost impossible to screen them. Yeah. Well, we, but at the same time, we screen pole buildings. We do? We require well, pole buildings yeah. to be screened? If, we, if they're in the front. If they're yeah, in the front. In the front. These are yeah. accessory structures. They're not going to be and in the front. And they're going to be in the front and lakeshore, because they're going to be next to the street. Well, and they might also be if someone only has sunlight in their front yard. If somebody only has... I mean, you, you might end up with right. someone coming in here with a request for a variance, kind of like the guy from Pilar did, mm -hmm. because yeah. the only place he could put it on the on his property was, was right in, next to the road. in the right next to the Which road. is fine, because if they get a CUP, then we make them do some screening. Screening. We can do whatever we want on a CUP mm -hmm. well, or a had, variance. We had an issue last winter. We are talking about all the junk cars and storage yeah. tanks and mm -hmm. all around the lakes, and they're all it's right true. next to the road. Now we're going to allow some... Solar panels too? I, I tend to be kind of on your side of the fence here, but I don't know. We've played the numbers game, 90%, 50%, to the extent possible. We've tried all those things. How do we, 
how do we deviate? Yeah, into that? yeah. I don't know. I, um, I think I, I think the screening. I mean, obviously, we're mostly concerned here about lakeshore lots because on man, on the regular lots, they're going to have to put them behind the house, but right? I, so this is I just lakeshore lots. But I don't know. Like, I think that there's plenty of properties. My mine would be one of them where the house is six, sixty feet off of the highway, and there's plenty of room in the side yards and plenty of sun in the two side yards, right next to the house, sixty feet off the road, which should be behind the front of my house. Well, you, bear, bear in mind, they also if you put a solar panel in right. the area. And they also need to be close enough to a power line mm -hmm. that it's that it makes sense to put it in. Right. So because that's part of the right. cost of putting right. it in. Right. And if you drive up and down Olinda, I know that you'll find plenty of houses with the power line running right there that it would be behind a house, but up by the road you'd be able to see it. So if that's what you're concerned about. Yeah, I've got um, a bunch of <laughs> driving down the road and all you see is panels. Are we is it different than yeah. driving down the road and seeing garages? <clears throat> garages and panels. <laughs> to, One, to me, it is. I, we I, want to minimize. I mean, I'm just asking the question because we don't. If somebody on a lakeshore has well, a, garage a garage between the house and the and the road, we don't make them screen the garage. Mm -hmm. No, we don't like that either. But we talked about screening for parking vehicles and all that kind of stuff because this was now in addition to the garage, and we for did consistency. That. You're right. We did talk about that. And is there? There's power poles to these systems that have to be installed? Possibly. I mean, it's nothing like the big systems that look oh, like an like electrical well, power we, plant. We had one put in because our existing pole was 40 years old. Okay, so maybe if another pole is going in. It, it could be. Okay. But it, I mean, and you can have it quite a ways from the pole, but every foot it is away adds to the cost of it. And so that's mm -hmm. a calculus that, the, that they would have to put in. That's one of my but generally, favorite. if they have a business or a home, they'll have power lines going into the business or the home. So right, right. I, power poles are ugly anyway. Yeah. And they, we've added a whole bunch more with these big solar fields now. Yeah, they're but terrible. I, the, that's, yeah. that's not going to be a factor in these yeah. on-site solar fields. For the most fields. part, these will be hooking up to existing ones. So yeah, okay. I just don't want Scandi to turn into a big yeah. electrical plant. Well, maybe we get, if it seems to be only a matter in, in uh, shorelands, that we should have... Not shoreland, lakeshore. Lakeshore, that we should um, spell out lakeshore and put the possibility of screening in there. So ground-mounted solar energy systems shall be screened from view from the public right-of-way on lakeshore properties. You wouldn't care if you, you drive by if you drove by my house and I had panels in my side yard. I'm up by the road. Probably on side though. I don't want them <laughs> close to the road though. <laughs> well, they'll be 60 feet off the road. I think it depends on the circumstance. I mean, it's like screening of anything, or you got an additional use. You got a tr uh, motor home. You got this or whatever. We're trying to clean up that look of clutter. And I think solar panels can be another clutter type structure. And if you can put it, you know, you can place it where it isn't, or you can screen it somehow so it isn't, I don't have a problem. Uh, okay, so, so, so you might want to consider screening on, on, um, on the road right of ways then. I mean, on regular, yeah. on re I'm sorry, on regular, on regular non lakeshore lots is what I meant. On regular, uh, non lakeshore -lake lots, regular lots. Well, I thought on regular, uh, non lakeshore lots, I thought it was an accessory structure. You had to put that. Well, yeah, but we're talking about like Travis's place, where, and my place for that matter, well, on your side. which is right side up on the road. Side. I mean, we yeah. have, yeah. So, so accessory structures are allowed on the side. Mm -hmm. So we potentially, my house is. Closer to the road than yours, probably. Right, but you don't really have. Can you put it in the back? I kind of do. Can you put it behind the house? I could, but I don't have to because right. I could put it on the side but yard. Right now, accessory structures can be on the side. Okay. So, so potentially, I could put one within, you know, well, it's probably 60 feet from the road is the front of my house. Maybe, maybe it's 50 or 40, okay. something like that. So, so are you are you thinking that you would want that to be screened then? Again, I think it's an individual case. If you, if you get, if you 
line them up almost across your whole property, definitely. Yeah. If they were narrow and deep where you didn't see so much of it, that's a different case. So how do we manage well, that then? I don't know. A, a question could be whether we say that if, if a conditional use permit is required, the city may require screening. Well, which would yeah, mean that for the small ones, yeah. you wouldn't. Yeah. But if yeah. someone is getting above the 800 square feet, then you then the city may may require it. Well, I think that I think definitely think that should be in there. But that doesn't that doesn't handle Tom's problem with the lakeshore lots that have it in the front. Without going down the road, which is actually the back. Which is actually the back. Well, in front of the house, close to the road. Between the house and the road. Right. Yeah. Right. Um, so, I mean. So if a CUP is required or on Lakeshore properties. What's your address? It still doesn't have, it covers two thirds of it, but yeah, it's not going to cover just these the 800 one, yeah, square Yeah, so that feet. handles most, right, yeah. That, that, yeah. We just have the one issue of people who have houses that are close to the road that, yep. that potentially have lots of side yard. I mean, I've got 600 feet of road frontage that I could, but if it's not very many houses, are we going to be? Maybe we just don't worry about it. Yeah, that's a good point. Maybe we don't worry about it. So if we said if someone so needs to get a conditional use permit for a ground mounted system, the city can require screening or if it's on a lakeshore property, the city can require screening. What if um, what if we added something like if the solar panels add or yeah. if yeah. the solar panels are within 100 feet of the road the then they then the city could also require yeah. screening for that the left arrow. and then maybe that would be a, since right. that that would still be a an administrative right. permit and then it would be up to the administrator to say well you have to screen this or it'd be right. part of looking okay. at the building permit Oh, so, so these need a building permit. Okay. So if someone comes in with a building permit and it, it and they're needing a CUP, or if they're on a lakeshore property, or if it's within a hundred feet of the road, the city could require screening. Does that suit suit you? Yeah. Okay. Hundred feet from the road. Hundred feet from the road. Yeah. Did you all point out on this? Which Travis? encourages people to put them to the back. Sure. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Because yeah. they don't have to worry about. Not that. everybody's gonna. Put in solar panels either. No, uh, not everyone is. Twenty like percent, maybe ten percent. Yeah, I wouldn't even say that. Probably. Yeah, maybe ten. And it is going to change dramatically. Do you have out, Travis? I was I was just showing you this. This would be my side yard. So if he just kind of pans right, you'll see where the house is. I keep going, a couple more. So the house is right there in between those two trees. Mm -hmm. You you'd be able to see the solar panels. You wouldn't be able to see my house because of the trees. <laughs> um, but in that side yard to the left, it'd be prime. I get the sun all day long. I'm right next to the power pole. I'm 60 feet off the road. It's, it would be ideal. And there's which, a which direction is that facing? That's facing you, facing west. That's facing west. Yeah. So the panels, if so they the were panels facing would south, be running, yeah. would be on end to the yeah. road? Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Be, yeah. The end would be yeah. facing Which is road. less intrusive right. in mm -hmm. itself. Yeah. True, yeah. true. Yeah, but, but this, the, but this property just as easily could be facing south. I know, but I'm just yeah. saying, I, I don't think that can be written in, but that does make right. a big difference. It does, yeah. yeah. So the but, next step for this would be a public hearing. Are people agreeable to trying out this language at the public hearing and thinking about it a little yeah. bit? And you um, said if, if a conditional use permit is required, the city can require screening. Or if a smaller, you know, any system is on a lakeshore property or within 100 feet of the road, the city can require right screening away. as a part of the what? road right, right away. away. Yes. Road right away, yeah. So on Travis's property, let's take a look at what where this would be. You'd go all the way back to being near the pond. Then you're next to a wetland, you can't do it. <laughs> well, inside you'd be back right back in that <laughs> You'd be right back in here, a little bit yeah. behind the back of your house. So, so you'd have to go to the back side of that field or, or do screening. Or do screening. That would be your mm -hmm. option. No, no, no. How did you just word that? I don't have 100 to. feet. 100 feet. No, you said. If it's over a certain Within 100 feet, it may be required. The city may require. The city, city may, may require, require. Depending on the situation. I might not have to, right? Because if yours right. was on the side on, on end, it would what be would be the point? Yeah. I might not have to. Yeah, you might not have to. But the city may require. 
So is that too subjective or is it objective? I can well, that's leaving it up to Neil for to be Neil. to say mm -hmm. this. Yeah, so this building is building saying, "Well, yeah, this." And then are we saying like up to a percent, like we've said on other? No, so, no, just honestly, kinda. for yeah. this, just yeah. these are small. Whatever yeah. Neil yeah, says. Yeah. I mean, when you think of a two, you know, two car garage size. Yeah. 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 Okay. Is this one ready for public hearing? Yes. Oh my goodness. Yes. 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 Yeah, those panels just look like little garages on the back of the house. All right. Oh my gosh, that's crazy. Jackson Metals is a little Now on to the easy one, right? Yeah, now to the easy yep. one. All right, so that brings us to the uh, Shoreland Ordinance. So the first question was an interesting question that involves your two sketches there. We were talking about the two definitions of building height. The one is a DNR definition and the, the one is one the city has traditionally used. The city definition is more complicated, um, but when you draw it out and Neil picked the 12 foot, which turned out to be kind of the sweet spot here, which would be kind of a typical basement size, if somebody had 12 feet <coughs> below grade. Yeah, well it's, we'll go DNR right now. Okay, so in a DNR definition, if the distance between the lowest grade and the highest grade was 12 feet, using their definition, this building would be 34 feet high and it would be within the height standard, which is thir currently 35 feet. <coughs> However, if we use the city's definition, it's too tall. Because the city takes half the distance. Instead of starting at the highest, mm -hmm. instead of starting, I think, yeah. At, take the average. The, so the DNR takes 10 feet, gives you 10 feet. A maximum feet, of 10 feet. Gives you, allows you 10 feet there. No matter what it is. No matter the max what it is. is 10. Okay. They start at 10 above the lowest grade. Mm -hmm. Whereas the city splits. Yep, so you lose some. So you lose some. <laughs> and this is probably one of the few examples where it would make a, dis a difference. If it got much higher, it wouldn't be allowed by either one of them. But at this 12 foot level, which might be a fairly common. That's pretty high for the, a basement. The yeah. city's definition would say this but building is a full too tall. Walkout, from the floor elevation yeah. to up, you know, it's probably... Like where the deck would be on the next yeah. level. Yeah. You know, it's, you're probably 10 to 12 feet. It's usually yeah. 10, because we always did basements at 8 feet. If the guy wanted a 9 foot ceiling, then you'd be at 10 feet. Mm -hmm. yeah. Two foot truss or a 16 inch truss or something. And, and if we were at that point at 10 feet, it wouldn't make a difference. The building would fit under either, either definition. It would be permitted. It would be fine. Okay. If we get to this point though where we have, because either because of really steep slopes, we have more distance here, um, or because someone wants a, you know, a bigger basement, the city's is the more conservative definition. So the question for you, and I think that's why it's been used in the past, is because people Wait, the city's or the DNR? The city's is more conservative. But more that definitely. gives you a building height. The city definition gives you a building height of 37. 37. So this was right. So this means that they would have to reduce this building by two feet. Oh, oh, okay. I get what you're saying. Because the standard okay. is 35 Okay, because by this calculation, it's too high. It's too high. Yeah. Okay. So, okay. and I think that's why the city used it in the past is that okay. there was a lot of concern at one point about tall houses that people were building on Lakeshore and that they were very visible from the lake. Okay. Um, or they tended to loom over the cabins Adjacent next houses. door. Yeah. 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 So that's the question for you. Do you want to stay with that city definition or do you want to allow a little, a little higher buildings with the DNR definition? Well, I'd rather stay with the city definition than to make them lower. That makes more sense to me. Um, I do have one question, though. Does this take into account the, the the median between the two as the actual height, or are we are we or are we saying the over the total height is going to be thirty seven, or is that the median? The, it's, I was figuring the mean. The mean. Okay. Yeah, the mean, the average, or the median. <laughs> Whatever it says in the definition. Um. Because if, because, you know, are, are we calculating, what, what is, what, 
based on each calculation, what is the ultimate height? Or, or do we they both use them. do they both use the median point between the eaves well, and the ridge? They use average on the DNR example. They yeah. use average on the okay. So they and, both use the average. And then, yes. Yeah. Okay. okay. So so that calculation is the same. So the ultimate height would just be dependent on how okay. the slope of the roof. Okay. Well, the other difference with the city's one is the DNR uses the average height of the highest gable, whereas the city uses. The mean height the of height. the eaves and the ridge, which is the ridge of the roof in this example, is not the highest gable. Okay. So that's part of why the city definition ends up being a little bit different, too, yeah. is it uses really more the ridge line, and it doesn't care so much if somebody has it. A gable that sticks well, up. Well, I think bit. that this is a little silly because I don't know how you'd even tie in a roof like that. I feel like the ridge, you would have that high roof go all the way across. That wouldn't you be able, that wouldn't. would be a ridge. I mean, because how do you even tie that? The, the but you do have that other roof. little gable there. See that probably. Yeah, but might. even that, it's like, how would you? You wouldn't build a house like that. You wouldn't. No, you, wouldn't. you wouldn't gable That's over right. the top of the roof. It would be the, the ridge. It yeah. just would be the ridge. It would okay. have to be the ridge. That's why we have builders in our midst. Yeah, so it would be the same in either definition. You could gable it weirdly down, I guess, but it'd just be weird. Yeah, yeah. so that'd be... So anyway, okay, so it doesn't matter. people more satisfied keeping the city's definition like the and being what a little you, more you guys, conservative. Yeah. Any thoughts? Yeah. Let's go with the more conservative fine. definition. Yeah. Does that seem pretty consistent with other communities? Yeah, a lot of people choose to keep their own and be a little more conservative about height because as soon as somebody builds a you know something that appears to be a three-story building from the lakeside there's a lot I mean there's people a lot get of communities that are building three-story box homes it's ridiculous they're ugly as sin where well yeah, they want to three get three-story box homes everywhere that's just what it is three-story walkout box home oh because the walkout on the back side. yeah it's three stories on the back right there's a yeah. house off of uh seven it's really narrow, but it's got super high gables. We brought that down, up last time. Down, yeah. Yeah. yeah, down on Norell. Yeah. 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 That's a good yeah, example like, for that. Yeah. Didn't Chris say that wasn't even in Scandia? It's not, yeah. technically. It's, it's in May. May. Isn't yeah. it May? Yeah. It's in Scandia Service Fire District. Yeah. So then the next question is the land use tables <clears throat> and whether we're satisfied with how those look. We just wanted to do one last look through the land we, we had a question before about duplex and then we got further right. discussion yeah are we going to do that or not and that's the i think the primary question is that one about duplex well and then the other thing that we really needed to deal with is uh the table for tributary streams right for streams yeah so okay. what do you think guys there's um in your current ordinance, you would not permit duplexes, triplexes, and quads as uses. People could have a single family home, they could also have an accessory dwelling unit. To me, that's kind of it. It's sort of the same thing. Yeah. <laughs> well, you could, you could yeah. build one with an accessory structure or dwelling unit, but you can't build a duplex. How many duplexes do we have in this community? There aren't very many duplexes no. built anymore, no. unless someone does it for a family. I, I've seen a few cases where somebody does it for a multi-generational multi family. But that's really, yeah. 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 Um, so, so um, what about on some of these non-conforming lots? If we said this was a permitted use, and then we have a non-conforming, so, you know, we say, and so that means if it's a permitted use, it's just like the single families, like, we generally let them do it as long as they try their best to meet the requirements. Yeah. So if we say on this non-conforming lot, all of a sudden now you're going to build a triplex, um, where, where's the check and balance to get that to not be oversized, because obviously you're going to have, you know, more square footage. We have, you know, lot coverage for one. Lot coverage, but sometimes we let them stretch on the lot coverage if the lots are really small. We've never let anybody right. go beyond the 25. The 25. We, never, we don't do that. That's okay. the thing we've so always been very So lot coverage would still be, the, still be the... It's the ultimate limiter. Okay. Okay. All right, well, so then maybe lot coverage would keep that in check then. 
Because the thing I worry about this is would be that if you get a little tiny lot and then all of a sudden you've got this four unit apartment complex on a little tiny lot. And you lot. could choose to allow duplexes since we allow accessory apartments but not allow the other two. Try bikes and quad. Yeah, I mean, let's face it, if you can have an inter internal accessory dwelling unit when there's very little difference between that and a duplex. There is very yeah. little. Yeah. yeah. So think, are, do people want to say duplexes are permitted but not the other two? I think you'd be fine in saying that. I don't think that hey, you'd have anybody coming to request a tri or a quad. Yeah. I just yeah. don't okay. see it in scale. Do that. Duplex yeah. makes sense. Yeah, you think? Yep. Okay. I'm, I'm, I'm fine with that. Okay. So that's so. what we'll do with that table. The other ones I think we had pretty good agreement on. I also don't think you're going to have a whole lot of duplex requests. Probably not. It's yeah. just not a very popular building no. type now unless someone's very got a very specific family Maybe. situation that wants yeah. it. Or mm -hmm. Lo, uh, not low income, but um, affordable. Maybe some like affordable housing development somewhere where they want to be more efficient or something. Oh, yeah, but not on a lake shore. Yeah, not certainly yeah. not on a lake shore. <laughs> so then, First on the, the table on the next page um, <coughs> is the table. Uh, Tim, on your in your current ordinance, all it says you know, that lands on tributary streams. Jerry, jump back a second. Oh. One of the things in here that if I look at it, the just because it's within the uh, the thousand foot, you know, our, the shoreland overlay, our Bliss sewer system would it would, be, would become a non permitted use. So should we add essential services? Oh yeah, we can add essential services. Yeah. The Bliss what system? Sewer system. So, oh wait, a minute, it is there? I'm sorry. It's there. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I must have been looking at an older one. Yeah, we added that in that one. So, Keep up. next page. Right <laughs> now in your tired. shoreland ordinance, it says on land that are, on shorelands that are part of tributary streams, the land use is governed by the underlying zoning. You have the, ch the opportunity instead to have a table, which is what the DNR has in their ordinance. Your tributary streams are primarily along the river. These guys up here, yeah. and they're pretty much in the ag, ag district, ag yeah. core. Do you want to continue to have it just be what's allowed in the ag core district, or do you want to be more specific about it? What's the worst that could happen? Uh, who knows? The question would be: Would you ever want to allow any kind of commercial use in that area other than ag? I don't even no, think we could. Probably, it'd be tough. I, I don't, don't know, know why. It, we wouldn't even be allowed to. We, it's not a rural commercial, and it's not in the it's not in the industrial park. Or well, the, I guess the suggestion here is that we could have something different. Well, and I also don't think you're going to put something way down Ogilvy or whatever the heck road that is. Yeah, it's pretty far outside the village. So shall we just stick just with what stick with says? what we have already? Yeah. Okay. Is are there any? I mean, I don't see that they're anywhere else in the city. No, that's, no, that's spot. pretty much it. You know, and I mean, you know, some of this, I mean, you know, if I had a concern, uh, I'll pass this out just for reference because I think it's good. Uh, this, these are, this is a DNR map of what public waters would be. So if you look at where. So some of those are for the yeah, and they actually crossed cross 95. I just want a dog because mm -hmm. I'm hungry. You didn't get dinner. You did cross 95 a little bit. All the stuff around Park Hill and Oldfield and 230, those are not. Everything down by, you know, William O'Brien State Park, those are not either. Yeah, why isn't, why aren't all these down here? They're not considered public waters. There's, the DNR has always had some definitions for why things, you know, whether they're in, intermittent. Okay. Sometimes if they're an intermittent stream, you know, Meaning. hardly ever, then it would not end up being a public water. Oh, okay. And I think, you know, that's one thing that to, you know, we <coughs> may want to jump back to, not to complicate this, in terms of when you look at what this ordinance applies to? You yeah, know. it doesn't apply to every single water body in the city, just right. to the public water. And I think we, you know, when I read this, I think that's a worthy discussion as to if it's just applying to public waters. Uh, you know, this this is the areas where it would impact. 
Right. It's just the public waters that That's it impacts. Fair. Except yeah. for that we've added that thing about wetlands, wetland buffers, which applies Sorry. to all non 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 DNR classified waters. <laughs> yeah, we learned that. Yeah, so, we probably, in terms of jurisdiction, there's a section up there we should probably be very explicit in terms of what we're regulating. Yeah. And I think, doesn't it say that it applies to public waters? And then it, it would reference you to the map. Uh, what it's, right now it says... Uh, <coughs> apply to shorelands of public water bodies as classified in section 4.1 of the ordinance. Right, and then 4.1 just really references the ones that are on here. Those are and there's the, actually, there's one we probably should add to that list, but that's a cleanup thing you and I the need. The Zavril one? There's a Zavril one and that one to the north. Oh, that curly one that's going yeah, up into the... Yeah, it goes up into yeah. Chisago County, because more of it's in Chisago, but it is uh, yeah, the we public water in Chisago. But I think that jurisdiction, we need to work on that definition a little bit. It helps to have the map, honestly. I think the map mm -hmm. is important for people to see what what applies. How new is this map that you printed? This is the newest. This is the newest. But not new enough for the new name of Half Breed Lake? No. No. Oh, <laughs> it's a couple years oh, no, old, probably. Right. It's Key Watton. Key Watton, is that what it's called now? Yeah. yeah. You can change that after this comp plan. You can change it on all your maps. Can't wait. So okay. Sorry. the other thing we did after last time was take out the references to industrial uses, yeah. since we really don't have any industrial uses in Shoreland. Um, did we wipe out commercial uses in Shoreland? No. Um, I think we've got restaurants being permitted in. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, permitted. And then you decided to leave both sets of standards well, in the ordinance for jump, the sake of Jump back to that hearing. because if you go to that land use table, we've got, we should be clear because we say no commercial, but yes, to, but conditional to restaurants. Wait. Oh, I see. So for commercial, do you want to say um, C? Well, this is, is, this, is what you have the latest version? Because on my version, commercial says P or C. Yeah, that's what I'm looking at. So you have a different version than what I'm looking at. Page so which do we want it to be? So you're looking at the table for tributaries. I'm oh, looking oh I'm looking at the wrong table. The for main table. Late, late. Oh, gosh. OK. <laughs> Sorry. So the question is, do we want to say commercial could be um, Conditional uses in Shoreland? Um, yeah, I think it should be. Well, we already have water dependent conditional. Commercial is yeah. conditional. Um, oh, as accessory to residential. And restaurants are though. conditional. So maybe if we just change commercial to conditional, that allows you, if a restaurant comes forward or something. Yeah. related to a restaurant that you would be able Or does that open the, uh, the, the doors gates. too wide? And that's the question. Do you want to open the, it up to other commercial uses? Well, we still allow them if they're water dependent, right? We could, or we could say commercial and in parentheses, not restaurants or something like that, excluding, excluding restaurants. restaurants or food and beverage or something like mm -hmm. that. <clears throat> Conditional commercial. Well, is there any other type of commercial use? What about marinas? Is that under water? Do we have water use still Isn't in that here? A water dependent. Yeah, that well, it water says water dependent commercial as accessory. accessory to residential plan unit development. Yeah, so a marina could be independent of a of a plan unit development. So, so do we want to allow for the possibility of a marina in Shoreline? Well, I think, yeah. Wouldn't we? Well, I don't know where else it would be other than a Shoreline. <laughs> it would be pretty silly to have a marina in the middle of the village, huh? <laughs> well, now the question is, do you want a marina on one of the lakes, a commercial marina? Yeah, I think that's the question. 
Uh, I can why, 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 why wouldn't we want one on on Big Marine? I don't understand. I don't know exactly why we would what? say no to one on Big Marine. Like the ones that they have down on White Bear, and they're just slammed, maybe. I guess I don't live on a lake. I have, that? I have less investment to it. Tom, yeah, Tommy, you live on the lake. What, yeah. I mean, wouldn't we? Would 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 we? Or I mean, to, in my way of thinking, we would want a marina on Big Marine. There somewhere. is one. There is. But it's uh, but it's in May Township. Down? Are you talking the about disabled vets? The vets. Oh, the vets camp. That's a marina. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they it's do. They do have a marina there. That's right. Like they sell gas and stuff to anybody. Oh, I'm sure they do. I don't know anybody. I've never, I've never got it, but I mean, it's a huge, the multi-slip multi <laughs> yeah. dock system. I think yeah. it's limited to the use of the veterans and their families, though. Well, it may be. You can yes. only put a boat but there, I think, not, if you are. Right, but, but I don't know if they would sell yeah. gas to anybody. I mean, or if they even the have private there. marina. Yeah, oh, the private oh. marina. <laughs> okay, well, yeah. private private marina. Marina. I'm talking about a public marina. There's no public marinas on Big Marine. And, and is there a good reason why to not have one? Didn't there used to be one? Over at the, just by the vet's camp, just north of that. Yeah, it used to be called Shady Birch or something yeah. like that. There was a bar there. Yeah, in May Township, yeah. Yep. Yeah. I, I don't see why you wouldn't. If I really wanted a boat and I needed a place to put it, I'd maybe... So a marina thing. as a conditional use? I also think that you're going to get people that are going to put in their a dock for some stupid auto shop and call it water dependent. I mean, you're going to have people trying to make loopholes, right? Well, there are limits about size, about what you can do in terms of renting. There's, you can only have, I think it's up to six or something, if you're going to have a dock. Oh. There, there are some limits. You can't okay. just put a million docks out there. So what is the definition of a marina? I guess I don't know. I guess I assumed a marina was a place where you could get bait and guess your boat. We could try to bring a definition back and then you guys yeah. could decide if you really feel like the you one want to rest, that. You know, at the rest camp is one thing. Are we yeah, really that's not, to me that's not a marina. That, well, it's a private marina, but and they might call it a marina, but to the rest of the world, it's not a marina. It's just yeah. the vet camp. If so you, the only difference is you can't get bait there or gas. Yeah, yeah. It's but not you, really but a business. You can dock a lot of boats there. Well, but it's not a business, though. Right. No, flip not a business. It's up a little yeah. bit. Uh, page nine, I think this might help. Definition of water dependent use. Page uh, nine. Use the land for commercial, industrial, public, or we could probably lop off industrial. Yeah, we did. Where access to and use of public water is an integral part of the normal conduct of the operation. Marinas, resorts, restaurants with transient docking facilities are examples of commercial uses. So that eliminates. So if you, your if you were if you were going to do this for commercial, you could probably just sit there and say water dependent commercial because you already have that definition yeah. in your. Yeah. Ordinance. So we can add that as okay. uh, I, with a CP, a water. Because you know that that then you know takes you know if you did that you don't need to you don't need to separate out yeah. a restaurant. Right. Yeah. So but what's the dock at? What's the docks at Tigabo? What are they? Private docks. That's as a part of a PUD. Yeah. Part of a PUD. Yeah. Yeah. Private. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. So the, we'd have a one that's a commercial excluding water dependent commercial. <clears throat> And, and that would be not not permitted. But then we'd have a separate one that's water dependent commercial, and that could be permitted with a CP. That yeah. Makes sense. Yeah. And then we said we said a CUP for restaurants as well. Yeah, well, that's part of that. That is water. a water. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If they're right yeah. next to the We're lake, they're a water they're dependent have, use. The yeah. question would be, do you want to allow restaurants that are not like right next to the lake? Yeah. And yeah. I, yeah, I would say it is, and I and did. You, so we'll leave that one in there too. A restaurant could be permitted anywhere in Shoreland, Part of the which is really kind of like the big marine store. Yeah. Oh, oh. What's well, the, actually, all the some restaurants there, with transient docking facilities. So, so that would be, so that would be, so if we did that, that would be a restaurant that's not on the lake. Right. Yeah. So just to, that would just so that would open up all of these areas that are not in the commercial areas. And not on the lake, but are within a thousand feet of the lake to having a restaurant. 
which is probably not going to happen. Um, but maybe we should take that out because and just allow because the water are dependent. Oriented. Yeah, water dependent shoreland. I think that you're not. You are ridiculous if you're going to buy a lakeshore property and not put your restaurant on the lake. Well, right, but you could buy but you could buy this piece of property right here and put your put your restaurant right there. You don't. Well, okay, they have access to the lake, but somewhere oh, saying, like yeah, lake shore, yeah. Or they, well, I mean, technically, like, what it does is that you could put a if you had a restaurant there, you could put a restaurant at the corner of Manning and One Eighty Seventh, Manning and One Eighty Fifth. Yeah, or or ninety, or you could put one on this ninety seven. Uh, like right here randomly in the middle of 97 and wherever this is near this lake 61 whatever that is So you could put a you could put a restaurant right there if if we add, add the well, it's still a CUP oh, But I see what you're saying. You could put a if restaurant you, right there if you want I see what to. you're saying because it's within the lake sh yeah. <laughs> water, Yeah, yeah. I mean, not dependent yeah. on the water. So I think oh, I we it. take that off yeah, of there yeah, and I see it's just water totally. dependent. I yeah. agree. Yeah, yeah. Because the definition of water dependent includes restaurants that have the transit mm -hmm. docking facility. Right. Okay, so we're taking the plain restaurant one out, and we're just having the restaurants that are water dependent. Oh, that's a gross yeah. loophole we almost moved to. We could have had restaurants everywhere. <laughs> Yeah. Well, it's it's anybody want to kind of figure out where it's they crazy. Can go. crazy. <laughs> so many places eating scanty all of a sudden. Okay. <laughs> McDonald's on every corner. From two to three. <laughs> so, you guys decided to leave both the DNR standards and the city's current standards in the draft so that we could have a discussion with the lake associations. And, and others at a public hearing about that to say whether we were going to use the smaller lot sizes or yeah. whether we were going to continue to use the big ones, the scandy ones. So what did you say we left in here for the public? There's two. There's a table that shows the DNR's lot standards size. for lot size oh. and lot width. Mm -hmm. And then there's at the right hand side the what the size of Scandia, Scandia current, current. You, currently uses. And Scandia uses significantly larger minimum lot sizes than the DNR would require. So and I think that was in, a, in an effort to limit the amount of development around lakes. Now, did we clarify with uh, the county whether the lots that are served by the Bliss and Anderson Erickson are soared or not It's soared? actually with the DNR. And the, in the DNR's mind, anything served by the Bliss is sewered. So in their minds, the sizes for lots that say with sewer here <clears throat> would apply to anything that could potentially be on one of your tools. I think we've system. we've lopped those off. Yeah, we need to change that. Yeah. What is we just found that out this week. Uh on the lake and not on the lake, right? Mm -hmm. So the shoreland but not shoreland on the lake. Right. right. Within shoreland but not yeah. on the lake. And we were gonna leave this entire table in here. Yeah, so people could get, you could get comments on it about getting an idea from other people whether they felt That's like right. yeah. you should. So and so then what, the table we need to be, <laughs> add back in here is that table Sword. about sewered lot sizes because it would apply to anything that could be on the city's 201 systems. Yeah. And that it still is a question whether you want to allow that or not or whether you want to continue with the same lot sizes you've used before. I don't think there's sewer should make a difference. And I don't, you know, the DNR says so because they believe that things like the Bliss system and city systems are maintained, mm -hmm. whereas they're not always thinking that private septic systems are. <clears throat> I'll really require pumping every X years and construction of them. Right, but they're not, you know, I think the difference is you're not disposing it into a treatment area that's immediately impacting the water. But if you design, if you get an approval from a, the city and the county for an on-site sewage treatment system, they use the same technology, they should be good no matter, if they're going to go into the lake, it shouldn't be approved. <laughs> yeah, right. It should be taking care of the issue before yeah. it gets to the lake. But it, I'm just telling you the DNR's rationale. Their yeah. rationale is that they will allow smaller lot sizes on a publicly owned sewer system because they believe it's maintained better. Well, the well other plus thing you don't need to have space for testing requirements. Right. You don't need to have space for a septic system. 
on, 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 a, on a sewered system, you don't need to have space on your lot for a septic oh. and remember now they require a backup, backup. Yeah. Yeah. So that's partly why they can, they believe they can be You know, small. some of it, you we've had that discussion because for, yeah, you know, I'm is. thinking your variance discussions where we've talked about where you're gonna uh, the this. septic and the backup, that's yeah. 10,000 square feet. Yeah, that's, that's a lot, mm -hmm. that's a lot. You know, so your lot, your minimum lot sizes can be very, very different. And you still um, have to have room for the house. Right. right. But so, so I would just want to say that sewage systems shouldn't be the issue because in both cases they should be adequately treated. That's yeah. what you would say, and but second, it's not what the DNR would say. Okay. No, but that doesn't make sense. And though. second is, are we talking, before we were talking about densities, are we going to allow smaller lots just because they're sewered? I don't think we should allow our smaller lots just because, for any reason. <laughs> yeah, I think. Right. Hey, cause, you know, we are talking before about density. Right. So now, why do we want to have more dense development just because they're sewered? Well, it's, or, it's, or available it's, it's, sewer. it's two different issues. The density is an issue, but then also the septic system is also the issue. I'm and saying the septic system shouldn't be an issue. Well, they're both but it, but it the is, same technology. Well, but the, D, the DNR is, say, is allowing communities to, or, or suggesting lots, that they can have smaller place. lots because they don't need to worry about the septic issue. Okay. But you guys the other issue with septic out. is the effluent is tested and held to a standard, where you mean on your community? residential, yeah. it's not. It's, it's not, not tested. Yeah. And I don't think that we're allowing okay. it. We're still saying we'd like to get to two and a half acre lots, right? I, uh, yeah, well, I think that was our discussion. That we that couldn't. That's the existence. discussion. It is whether whether you want to say when this goes out for a hearing that you're recommending staying with the current lot sizes, but you want to acknowledge to the public that the DNR would allow something smaller. So you want to get their feedback about it. I mean, you know, the other issue there, you know, that you know it would raise as you you know if you were on sewer, number one, it. Yeah, there, I, I don't think how much of a willingness there is to, you know, expand the sewer system. You know, there may there may be some, but the other issue then becomes, you know, if you look at the Bliss Edition, you know, let's face it, you know, in the Bliss Edition there are probably some unbuilt lots that if you came in now they don't meet the minimum lot size. <laughs> where if that was reduced, you have some lots there they may. That's the one thing about reducing the lot size is you have a lot of non-conforming lots under the current standards that if you lowered the standards to the DNR standards, those lots would become conforming lots. Yeah. That's one of the differences. The other difference is that for those big properties that are left on the lake, you could get a lot more density on those lots using the DNR standard. And I think that's why the city held off However, in the past. They have to be connected to the city sewer, sewer system, system and their limitations. Right, yeah. Yeah. But even if they're not connected to the city sewer system, the DNR is saying that they would recommend low, smaller lot sizes than what we have currently. Right. Even on the on sewered lots, they're fine with smaller lot sizes. Because they're good with 80,000 square feet, which is... Fourth. On a natural environment lake, whereas you guys... Yeah. Have... Five, five acres. acres, except on Goose Lake, where it's two and a half. Which five acres is what's for two hundred thousand plus two hundred. Yeah. Yeah. Even even more starkly different is on the recreational development lakes. On a riparian lot, the DNR allows going down to forty thousand square feet, which is about one acre, whereas you guys say two and a half, because yeah. that's what is in the general <coughs> rural district. That's your general minimum. <coughs> So it's really, and, and you guys could play it however you want to. You could say when we put it out for a public hearing that we want to stay with the current ones because we're concerned about density on the lake, about the potential for, you know, more, more impervious cover and all that. Um, but we want to acknowledge there are these other numbers and we want to hear from the public about it. That could get Is that kind of how you feel about it? <laughs> that, that could get really dangerous. It could? Yeah. yeah. But maybe yeah. you'd find out that everybody who's already on the lake Wants is the just lots. as happy to keep yeah. it yeah. the way it is now. Yeah. Unless they own a parcel that they right. want to split. Well, split, right. well I, I like the idea of keeping them the same, but I know that we didn't have a consensus across the board on that. So at the last time we looked at this, we said we'd go to the public with both options, yeah. So, yeah. which I'm fine with. Um, so. Okay. I'm fine with two. Yeah. Can really quick question. 
not super related, but this quarter quarter that we were talking about last time with the subdivision, um, with only having four houses on the quarter quarter, mm -hmm. how does that work with all the everything around the lakeshore? It's already they are all non-conforming. They're all non-conforming. They all mm -hmm. exist and. But that same. But we have, but in, in, in there's also a sense that you have to be if there is a lot that is buildable, you have to allow build it there. The one thing with four per 40, you know, from the Met Council perspective, is that's an overall density in the city. Okay. So, so it, they're, they're assuming that even though you have a bunch of little lake shore lots, you also you have farmland. Some big farmland mm -hmm. lots. So do, you, do we have to take that into consideration when we look at all these small lots that we have a certain amount of I think you know still to maintain four per 40? When, if there are ordinance changes that are required based upon the comp plan, I think it'd be worthwhile to, you know, have a discussion about that. I think that's the time to address it. Yeah, it's hard to do it here through the right. shoreline because it no. doesn't apply outside of shoreline. I was just thinking how this is in no way even close to 4 per 40. No, it's not. But it's existed way before that 4 per sure. 40 rule. Sure. All these lots existed way before. Sure. So we'll put it out that way. The one question about density is that um, your, your PUD ordinance, your city PUD ordinance, does not allow an increase in density beyond the underlying zoning district overall in the PUD. The DNR's PUD part of this ordinance does allow for density bonuses if people put a significant area along the shoreline into a permanent conservation easement. Okay, that's interesting. And um, so I think of, it's, this is almost more like the open space development. Mm -hmm. It's the same idea as open space development. Mm -hmm. um, they want to give people a, a reward for putting the lakeshore into a conservation easement. And so I guess the question for you is, do you want to allow that in Shoreland, but, but not in the rest of you, you know, or do we want to allow that in Shoreland, or do, do we want the Shoreland PUDs to have to conform to the PUDs in the city? But PUDs are not subject to the 4 per 40, right? They're, they, can have, they can have more density than that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I think a two and a half acre lot on the lake is going to have plenty of open land anyway. You can't build. <laughs> well, you're still You only take up so much area on two and a half acres. Well, 25% yeah. is the, the max, right? No. A two and a half acre lot, there's actually another table that. What they allow in PUDs is smaller lots off the lake. They wouldn't require two and a half. They, if you put us, it's more like the the whole idea of the open space development. If you put everything along the lake into a permanent conservation easement, you could start to have some one acre lots back off the lake. Just push them back off, have, and then have, and like, and a park have like or something. a park or community, not necessarily community, but the local, that, that plan unit development would all have access. Maybe there'd be a dock for everybody Right, then they, that's part of a PUD idea too, is that you have a common dock. Gazebo um, and a park. Let's think of Tagavo. Like mm -hmm. at Tigavo, is that it's a, it would be like, do we want to allow Tigavos on Lakeshore as a PUD option? Well, I like what they did. I think I think that's probably better than having a bliss. But it's only it all, it's only allowed then if someone is doing that kind of open space dedication. They only get yeah. the bonus if they allow open space dedication. Yeah, right. Yeah, I yeah I I'd be I, I like I do like the idea. Um, I, there is a question of the permanent conservation easements. Like where do the who do those get applied to? I think isn't there an issue with that now? Yeah, because although they've um, interestingly enough, city two things have happened. One. Oh, they um, do. One is that Minnesota Land Trust got so much negative feedback about quitting doing it, that mm -hmm. they have now decided they're going to do it if it protects significant habitat or natural resources. Okay. And if the developer is willing to work with them up front to design the development. Okay. 
So they're doing one right now down in Afton that's protecting habitat around a trout stream. Okay. It's that yeah. so that's going to be their limit. They're not going to do open space stuff, you know, out in the middle of the cornfield okay. and deal with those, but they will if it's significant conservation land. Okay. The county has also recently decided that they're going to be willing to carry conservation easements on areas that would have qualified for the legacy program. Okay. So they're doing one in May Which right now on a piece of land sure. that would have qualified. That's another program to preserve high quality habitat and natural resources. Got it. And Not so that's kind of their, so there are now two options if okay. it's something that really provides good habitat. Okay. Or protects a natural resource. Okay. Um, so, natural so there resource. is somebody to hold conservation easements okay. again, which okay. is a plus. Okay. Cool. All right. Well, there you go. Yeah. So, all right. So we'll say yes to that. Um, let's see. So the and then the next big one that has changed has been that wetland one since last time. Remember, you guys wanted to add some more de minimis things. And so after that table that's about the wetland classifications and structure setbacks. What page are we on, sure. On mine it's page six, 22, but I don't know what. I'm looking at the one with page all the corrections. Page 19, I think. 19 of 32. So right after, yep. right after that. Okay, so here they are. Number one, two, and three there. Number one we had last time, setbacks are not required for wetlands that are less than 400 square feet in area except for certain types um, or up to 1,000 square feet if approved by the city. So that means on very small wetlands we're not going to worry about those setbacks. Good. Number two is added, on managed two and managed three wetlands, structures may encroach onto 100 square feet or up to 5% of the structure setback area, whichever is greater. Yeah. I and manage two, manage three of the low end ones. Lower right? end ones. These yeah. Are the end. preserve and manage ones are the really high quality guys. Okay. And also the ones that are groundwater dependent are typically higher quality. So the manage two and three, we're saying that a structure could encroach up to 100 square feet or up to 5% of the setback if it's a bigger setback. Mm -hmm. um, and then number three, wetland sex setbacks are not required for water bodies that are exempted from wetland replacement choir requirements in Minnesota rules, which means basically low quality wetlands. The ones they exempt from replacement are low quality ones, such as um, wetlands that are part of public drainage systems, wetlands that have been restored or created by somebody, or wetland impacts due to utility projects. Does that, and, and Neil, you were part of this question too, does that get at the things you wanted to give a de minimis to? I think so. I think you were worried about the ones people had created. If somebody had created one, would we? Well, I, you know, I think if you if you look long, you know, long term, you know, you have. I mean, you know, it'll be interesting to see, you know, like with the watershed districts where they require uh, infiltration basins, and then you get those readily established, you know, five years from now, ten years from now. All of a sudden, all of a sudden they become a wetland, <laughs> right? Yeah. And every every building around there that they're designed to serve all of a sudden becomes non-conforming, right? Yeah. Because they're too. And, oh, yes. Okay. Uh, you know, yeah. you look at it, you can you know put it in there. Then you look at between the you know the hydrology, <laughs> the soils, and the plants. You know, if mm -hmm. it you know if it hits that trigger, ba boom, you created a wetland. Yeah. And all of a sudden, you know, it's you know your oops. Fill it in different quick. category. Fill it in quick. Right. And then the one other thing you asked me to change last time was in section seven of the performance standards, there was a thing about vegetative screening. I think this was one that Tom noticed. Um, where we required vegetative screening that didn't make any sense at all, and that actually it's um in seven point one. It's seven point one two where you see that. Um, previous cover. <coughs> water. We how do we screen water access ramps? I think yeah. was the question. Yeah. They don't really. Um, mm -hmm. So instead, what we're really worried about is that they have to be. We have to consider them as impervious cover. Yeah. I think there's just a spelling check 
per oh, impervious. impervious. Yeah. I don't, is imperious a word? Yeah, it is. Right. It, what is it that? means haughty. Oh, <laughs> what? Yeah. Like haughty. someone who's got their nose up in the air oh, is imperious. It. So we do those, 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 those imperious covers. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so said we do want impervious. I don't want to be imperious, but yeah. can we go back to um, um, placement of height and structure? <clears throat> Yeah, you would. we got this uh, picture here that shows you know ordinary high water mark and all that stuff and where you put the house. Now, what, what, can you these, tell us what page you're on? Page twenty-one. Page twenty-one. Oh, yeah. oh, just the page prior. Okay. Now, on, I don't know if this is right or not, but on Big Marine, the water levels in the seventies may have been higher than the ordinary high water level. Is that correct? They could have been because there's a control structure there. Now there's a control structure. Mm -hmm. So it says. This says ordinary high water level or the highest known water level. So does that preclude? Ooh, good catch. What does that mean? I think typically I was, I'm, yeah, I know exactly what you're saying. I'm, I'm looking at the definition because a lot of times I've seen definitions that refer to that as the ordinary high water as established by it's either the, the DNR, because I think the DNR has established ordinary high water marks for lakes. It's either that or the, the firm maps. And where it really comes, in, that in, comes into play is along a stream, where quite often there is not oh. an established ordinary high it's water important. level. Instead, they look at the, known highest, the point. known highest point or where the vegetation starts to turn from aquatic to something else. Uh, so it's not about where you got a dam or yeah. a dam. And but what I'd, on Big Green, would it be better just call it the ordinary high water mark? Yeah, you probably... We could say ordinary high water were established by the DNR. Okay, yeah. that would work good. Yeah. Right now, yeah. the definition of ordinary high water is a boundary of public waters and wetlands shall be an elevation delineated at the highest water level, which has been maintained for a sufficient period of time to leave evidence upon the landscape, commonly at that point where the natural vegetation changes from predominantly aquatic to predominantly terrestrial. But I think including, as determined by the DNR, maybe the, it may yeah. be the easiest way. Yeah, yeah I think we need to, because otherwise the bliss edition would not be there. Period. It's all under the ordinary high water mark. Yeah. yeah. You know where that is. It is. Okay. So on that figure, we'll add a note at the bottom that yep. it's the ordinary high where that's been determined by the DNR. Mm -hmm. There is just above that at 6.42. You changed it to 35 versus 32, I think. That was. 35 is what's in now. What's in your ordinance? That's what we just agreed on earlier with this. Right. No, that's already been in our ordinance. We weren't discussing the actual height. We were discussing the definition of how, how we determine measure. the height. Yeah. Oh. But you it's currently allow 35. 35. In we fact, you change. allow that in your throughout the city. That's the maximum height of most. Did, had you deleted that two? Sorry. It was 32. It looks like in the track changes that there was a deleted two. Is that from there? Uh, yeah, down there at the very bottom. No, the deleted was up in here, I think. You see that, like, second to the bottom there, that two? Mm -hmm. Did that go from 32 to 35, or am I just probably seeing that wrong? Um, actually, it went, it was 25 because it was a typo. Oh. oh. <laughs> it, it should be 35. Okay. In an uh, earlier version, it was 25, and that was purely a typo. Got it. Sherry, the change for ordinary high water, make, I think we should make that in the definitions. Okay, yep. It's definition number 30, and that way it's consistent. Thank you for explaining that. So I think that's most of the cleanups. The next part would be a big discussion, and so I'm wondering, given that we're at 9 o'clock, if we continue this to our next meeting, when, again, we don't really have any... <clears throat> applications coming up okay. so if we do hearings for the other two little ones and continue this it's probably a fair thing okay there's probably not going to be a lot of building on the lake shores over the winter no probably not, not, not a ton pretty safe. and i also think that in terms of doing a public hearing on this doing it the day after new year's would honestly not be a probably good time not, not, not okay. fair <laughs> it would not really be fair it would look to people like you're trying to sneak <laughs> Wait, so like, like, like the last, like the tax, it looks like the tax plan? What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> no. Overnight? Yeah. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> on 600 right. page ordinance. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What a skin you're trying to pull on yeah. us. With comments written in the border. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> in the margin. You know, I think right. one of the things when we continue this, because in our uses we've eliminated commercial PUDs, if you go back in there, it wipes out about a page and a half yeah. of this if you lop that off later on. So we can do that, it'll make the next one a little bit easier. The PUD part will go easier, yeah. yeah. But and those pages don't need to stay in there for the restaurant and the and the and the water base. They're, they're not, not commercial part of PUD. PUDs. They're oh they're C to P. Okay, okay, yeah. okay, okay. But they're not right. part of a massive development yeah. that includes okay. a so, resort and a Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We can take out all the rules on Okay. All the restaurants that? too. Cool. All right. Well, we'll take what the next. Well, uh, any items for the future agendas? One thing you're going to start seeing is rolling in our sections for the comp plan. Oh, good. Okay. Those will start rolling in. All right. We may have one in January. Or some of the some of the stuff that they're done with. Uh, land use is probably going to be the last. But I mean, as they go through, you know, <coughs> transportation, some of the things like that, uh, we'll start running, you know, running through those. Okay. Um, and uh, on suggestion of our mayor, um, if we could all go back and read the old comp plan, she oh, yeah, said that would right. be a good idea to do. So it's it's is that kind of, online. It's, it's it is online. It is yeah. online. Yeah. I've been um, having trouble sleeping on my own. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> there is some good reading in it. Some of it's fun, I think. <laughs> Wow. Okay. All right. <laughs> Sorry. And All right. what, I, what I'll try to do is I, let me take some of those documents that are in there, and I'll put them in a separate Dropbox folder and send everybody a link. Okay. Okay. And that way it'll be easy easier to access. Okay. And then I won't take the link down. Okay. It's either that or I can send you all links to where they are on our website. Whatever's easier. Uh, yeah, yeah, me. Me. yeah, links to the website is just as easy to me as the Dropbox. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay, so everybody should read and we should consider, We remember when we're looking at this, we don't have to just take it as it is. We can make changes, right? Is that the truth? Am I just saying that truth um, for the comp plan? I think we should probably recognize the fact that there's probably been a lot of time and effort there has. in Right. They're, it's they're, kind of like us spending a lot of time on a variance and then the city council saying, eh, eh. Well, there has. However, um, there was a lot of time spent on the old one as well. So I, I think it's a good idea. That's why Christine, I think, is suggesting that we read the old yeah, one sure. and, and kind of <laughs> see what it's got, see what it's got and say, let's educate, make, I think yeah, one, educate yeah, ourselves. One issue but, with the council is that, I mean, they were pretty explicit in terms of selecting the consultant. That right. it wanted to be a consent usable document. Right. You know, and one of the tough ones is now, I mean, you look at implementation steps, there's 20 pages and 150 implementation steps where this is supposed to really be kind of that overall direction, that real high picture view instead of you getting down to the nitty gritty. Yeah. And sure. I think that was one of the tough ones with the old one. Well, yeah, and what was I, a disappointment, I think, to a lot of people with the old one was that there were a few things that really were important to people like getting the ordinance changed to not allow more mining projects, for instance. Mm -hmm. And there was such a huge, overwhelming number of goals, policies, general things, that some important things got kind of lost in it. Sure. Okay. So that's, I think, one of the reasons to make it more succinct and really emphasizing the stuff you really want to do and not worry about a, a lot of fluff. Mm -hmm because there probably are some things you really want to get done. Sure. And, yeah. uh, you know, I think the, the, I wasn't part of the previous comp plan one, but I know the administrator that was part of that one when it was developed felt that it, it just became a catch-all for every sort of idea and right. I mean, nobody not, wanted to say to anybody, well, that's not a priority or, you know, it just everybody's yeah. everything got yeah. in it. And then some important things got lost. It's not a okay. comp plan. So sure. that's a that's thing good, to, good think way to think about. It. Yeah. Okay. You know, I and I think that's part of what Neil has wanted is a real kind of usable, deliberate, intentional, more deliberate, yeah. intentional document rather than oh, let's include everything. Yeah, right. <laughs> that'd be nice. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Sure. Okay. Can I do the honors? Yeah. Next meeting is January second, twenty eighteen. Will we have a quorum, or will anyone be gone? Uh, 
I will, I, I, I will be here. I'll be here. Okay. I'll be here. Yeah. Okay. I don't know. Okay. 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 Probably, but I'm not sure. <laughs> okay. Um, okay. Jared, before you bold, I got. Oh, yeah, right. I got you. Got 30 got seconds with you. I think yeah. there's a motion yeah. on the table. Okay. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. <laughs>